Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's our more general case of an integral of x dx divided by the quantity a plus bx to the nth power. n can be any integer greater than 1. And so what will this, how do we integrate this? We're going to use the same technique as before. We're going to let u equal what's in the denominator or what's inside the parentheses in this case. So let u equal a plus bx. That means that du is equal to b dx and dx is equal to du divided by b. So we can substitute this and this back in our integral. But when we do that, we'll notice we still have an x in the numerator, which means we also have to make the substitution where we have u minus a equals bx, or x is equal to u minus a divided by b, and substitute that also inside our integral. Let's see what it looks like now. So this becomes equal to the integral of x. Now x is u minus a divided by b, but let's take b outside the integral sign. This becomes 1 over b. And then dx becomes du divided by b. And again, let's take the b outside the integral sign. This becomes b squared. And in the denominator, we have a plus bx, which is u raised to the n power. Now you may say, well, where do we go from here? Well, we can divide the denominator into the numerator, which will give us the following. This is equal to 1 over b squared times the integral of u divided by u to the n, which is u to the 1 minus n minus, and then a divided by this becomes a times u to the minus n, the whole thing, times du. Now, we can integrate that rather quickly and rather really easily. This is equal to 1 over b squared times, all we have to do is add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so this becomes u to the 2 minus n divided by 2 minus n minus a times u to the minus n plus 1 divided by minus n plus 1, and then we can add the constant of integration. So let's take a quick look here. So we add 1 to the exponent, becomes 2 minus n, add 1 to the exponent, minus n plus 1, or we could have written 1 minus n, and divide by the new exponent. So now let's clean that up just a little bit. So we can bring this back to the denominator, and bring this back to the denominator, and see what happens. So this becomes equal to 1 over b squared times... Now I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 so I can switch this around. So we have a minus 1 divided by n minus 2, because that's the more typical way of writing that. And then when this comes to the denominator, we can write this as u. And since we bring it down, it changes the sign of the numerator of the exponent, becomes n minus 2 as well. And then here we have a negative. But since we're going to switch these two around, that becomes positive again, plus... Here we have an a in the numerator divided by, since we changed the sign here from negative to a plus, we're going to switch these around. So we're going to end up with a positive n minus 1 times, when we bring this down, we get u to the positive n minus 1 as well. And plus a constant of integration. So here it becomes more a matter of just writing it in a more standard form, having the unknown n before the number, and also here in the numerator. So now that we've done that, we can then substitute back in what, n is e what u is equal to, and we get the following. So this becomes equal to 1 over b squared times minus 1 divided by n minus 2, and then the quantity u to the n minus 2 now becomes a plus bx, a plus bx to the n minus 2. Plus the second fraction here, we get a in the numerator divided by n minus 1. And then here we get u to the n minus 1, but u is equal to a plus bx. So we have a plus bx to the n minus 1 and we still have our constant of integration. And that's probably the best way to write the answer. So you can see that, again, using the same technique, first replacing what's in parentheses by u, and then solving for x in terms of u, 
substituting and then dividing the denominator into the numerator to end up with integrals that we can readily integrate. And that's how it's done.